Hi, and welcome to my workshop. Hey, have you ever wondered how some people can take a box of balsa wood that looks like this and turn it into something that looks as great as that? I always wondered that myself. I needed a curved uh, wooden trestle for my HO scale model railroad layout, and I couldn't find a kit to buy. They're all out of stock, so I decided to build my own. In this video, you're going to see how I did it. I'll take you step by step through it, and maybe you'll be able to use some of these ideas on your own layout. So if you're ready, let's get started. So the first step is to do a little bit of research to figure out exactly what type of trussel bridge you want to build. You know, if you're a modeler that is modeling uh, your trains around a certain era, uh, then you're going to want to research, uh, you know, the trussel bridges from that era. In my case, um, I just, my whole HO layout is all based on childhood memories. So I'm kind of trying to build a trussel uh, that I remember from my childhood. So I did some research. I saw what other modelers have been making. I've uh, printed out some pictures of some real trussels um, and just, you know, really looked at a lot of different ones. And so I'm going to be using uh, some ideas from a bunch of different types of trussels and put them all together to make them look like what uh, the ones I remember playing around when I was a kid. So the first step I needed to do was I got a... Uh, a piece of quarter inch plywood to be the base and uh, I've tracked down my curve I'm using these 22 inch radius curves traced it out and then I just cut it with a uh, jigsaw and cut that curve piece out and this is how it looked once I got it cut and laid out so the next step uh, was to gather my supplies and you can see with uh, I've got all this different types of balsa wood I mentioned in the introduction to this video that I wanted to buy a kit initially, but all the kits were out of stock, so I decided to build my own. So I, I got the balsa wood from this company called Balsa Wood Incorporated. I highly recommend them. They uh, delivered all the stuff to me within a couple of days of my order. Uh, really good quality cuts, and uh, I was very happy camper. So I have all the parts and pieces that I believe I need to uh, make the trestle at this point. So we're ready to get started. Well, I wanted to share with you real quickly the tools that I'll be using for this project that you might need if you take on a similar project. And uh, the first one is a, a wood file. Then I'll be using this uh, light grade sandpaper, it's about 220. Uh, pencil, pen of course, ruler, um, a hacksaw with a very uh, small cut blade on it because you're going to be cutting through base wood and balsa wood, so a uh, smallest blade you can get for that hacksaw. And then also with the hacksaw, I got this neat little miter box, especially made for hobby, and it'll it has a nice lip on it. The lip goes right up against the edge of your workbench and secures it while you're making your cut. So it's a really nice uh, little piece of equipment. We'll be using that. Also a cutter, of course, with a super sharp blade on it because you want nice clean cuts and all the balsa wood that you're going to be making. A pair of tweezers are going to come in handy. Uh, uh, the stain that I'm going to be using is called Brazilian rosewood and it's a gel stain product by Minwax and the reason I chose a gel stain versus a liquid stain is because the gel stain goes on to the balsa wood and it doesn't dry evenly and actually that's the look I want that's what I'm after so uh, it's also going to be easier to get onto the uh, balsa wood and all, all the trestles uh, wood braces that I'm making it's going to be easier to handle than say a liquid stain so I'll be using that uh, of course, a paintbrush to put on the uh, stain and a glove, as always comes in handy. And for glue, I'm just using uh, the scenic glue from Woodland Scenics. You could probably use just about any glue that you prefer, but I, I find the Woodland Scenics products to be really dependable, so I'll be using that. So those are the tools I'll be using for this project. If you're right. So the step four is to play an experiment, and uh, this is the first trestle that I actually built and, and then I built a second one, and then you can see the difference between the first and the third one. So if you experiment a little bit, you're going to get better as you go along. So I went with this third uh, design. Uh, the fifth step, of course, is to actually start building the trussels. And um, I'm using these support beams that are out of balsa wood. I decided to make those three inches long. And then these round main support legs uh, that I cut, are cutting are six inches long. 
filing them off a little bit to get the rough, rough edges off with my wood file. And now I ran up against an interesting problem. These dowels are round, of course, and uh, I need five of them to make the legs of the support beam. The problem is that they're round, and so I'm trying to glue them to the top support piece, and they're rolling all over the place. So I ended up making a, kind of a template with some guiders on it, so I can put these dowels in, uh, in between the guidelines there, and they'll rest at the right height against the base of the uh, support beam, and I can glue them that way. And that worked out really well. All I had to do was to make sure that I centered uh, the support uh, dowels underneath the main beam. And uh, once you do that, I uh, just laid them right in. So I guess that old saying of uh, necessity is the mother of invention was really true. You'll notice that I'm using a brush uh, for the glue, and that's on purpose. Uh, it's a little tedious, but I found that in many cases, less glue is better, and you have better control if you're using a small brush with this type of detail work. Now that I've got all the dowels glued in place and they're spaced properly, I want to start measuring out my cross support beams. And I've decided to space them uh, one and a half inches apart, and I'll do three of them from top to bottom. So now I just have to measure the cross braces um, all the way across. You can see I'm just uh, doing it, kind of eyeballing a little bit. Uh, I find that sometimes that's easier than it, breaking out the ruler on these smaller pieces. But I just get the right uh, length for each one of the three cross braces. And then I'm just going to cut the piece of balsa wood with my uh, knife. Now, when you do this, uh, the edges are going to be a little bit rough, and I prefer a more smooth look. So once I've cut these off, I'm going to take my light grade sandpaper and very gently uh, sand the end of uh, these cross braces before I install them. And now installing them is simple. You're just, uh, remember, you, each one of these three braces is a different length, so you have to make sure you're gluing the right ones in the right spot. But it's a half inch, one and a half inches down. And uh, we've got them all glued together. And once we've done that, uh, now it's time to put in our cross support beams, and I'm doing it the same way. I'm just measuring it uh, for the uh, one angle of the cross support beam gluing them to cutting them gluing them together and then once that side of the wood trestle is done and it's dried I flip it over and now I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side and this is what it looks like when it's done okay so I'm done with uh, creating all of these support beams and right now what I'm doing is I'm spacing them out on the underside of the base of the curve. And I believe I'm going to be spacing these supports about two and a half inches in between each other. And you see I did create the centerpiece here, the center support for the curve. Um, obviously everything you're looking at right now is upside down because it's all drying and uh, been spacing out and everything. You'll see how that turns out right side up in the next uh, video segment. But then over here I've also started staining some of the supports. And you might remember that I was going to use this uh, Brazilian rosewood stain. Uh, and sure enough, you know, I really felt that it was going to look realistic. And sure enough, uh, as I've uh, stained a couple of these supports, uh, they are looking pretty good, I think. I, at least it's giving me the look that I wanted. So I'm very happy with how that's turned out. Now, just to do these two supports right here, I'm using a very small brush. And it took me 20 minutes just to do these two. So I have a lot of staining to do. And when I'm done with all this staining, I'll start uh, putting it together, turn it right side up, and you'll get to see what it's starting to look like. And then we'll talk about how we're going to mount the track on the top side of this and do some work up there. It's pretty time consuming, but uh, by using the gel stain, the thicker stain, along with the small brush, I'm able to get the exact look that I want out of the wood uh, when it dries. So uh, that's my choice on this. You could probably do it other ways. Okay, I've uh, made quite a lot of progress since the last video. I've given a final stain coating to all the support beams and uh, for the trestle track. 
and they're just drying right now but these guys are basically done one thing I am going to do is when they're done drying for the last time after my touch-ups I'm going to uh, give them a light spraying of this polyurethane just to protect the wood a little bit and make the stain last a little bit longer over the years I believe while that's drying I worked on the curve and on the curve I took some of that quarter inch balsa wood and I put it along the uh, one quarter inch base piece that I had cut out of wood put the balsa wood all the way around both sides glued it on and uh, that gives it a nice finished look then I've decided to use cork road bed on the bridge curve the rest of the layout is all I'm using uh, this foam road bed from Woodland Scenics and it's great stuff but for the bridge I wanted something that looked a little bit more bridge like if you will so I'm using the cork road bed on that and I'm staining it I've just stained the outline of where the track is going to be laid so my next step is to lay the track over the stain part that you see I'll secure the track on there and then um, I will stain the rest of the cork and the trim and once that's done I'll flip it upside down I'll go back to my support beams and I'll start installing the support beams and the bridge will literally be coming together so you'll see that in the next video stay tuned so this is where we're at so far uh, I still have a lot of work to do I have to install all the cross support beams across all of these uh, trussels so that's going to be a lot of work I'm staining and drying the balsa wood that I need for that part of the project over here. And this is what it looks like in place. I had to measure uh, to make sure that when I installed the bridge itself, it was in line with the track on both other ends. And it was. So, so far, so good. So now that the track is at the correct level and I know that the train's going to run smoothly, it's back to the workshop and now um, I'm finishing putting in all the uh, cross support beams also known as stringers on the outside of the trestle this is a lot of detail work each one of these uh, is not exactly the same length as the next so you're gonna see in a second how I uh, got around that problem but it's uh, putting in stick by stick as you would say and here's how I did it Okay, the balsa wood stringers that I'm using are 1 16th inch by an eighth of an inch. They're really small, so you can easily cut them with your fingernail instead of using the X-Acto knife. So I'm just doing that, just sanding the edges that you cut with your fingernail, and then taking just a little dab of glue on each end uh, to apply it to the cross, the cross braces to the uh, trestles themselves. So very detailed work, took a lot of time to do this, but it's uh, well worth it because uh, this is kind of, the, this look I think is kind of the soul of a trestle bridge. So it was fun doing. While that's drying, I'm back out to the uh, railroad and um, I need to create these mountains that are going to kind of slope down from the edge of the track uh, uh, below the trestle bridge. So that's what I'm doing here. And uh, you saw that pop up on the screen. If you want a how-to video on how to do that, you can go back and watch uh, video number four, my uh, red line scenery prep uh, for that how-to demonstration. And here's the finished product. Uh, the only thing I still need to do is to create this water barrel platform that I'm going to put right in the middle of the curve. But short of that, uh, it's all uh, dried and stained and ready to go over to the, uh, to the layout itself. And here's a photograph of what it looks after I installed it, secured the track, and so on. Turned out uh, a little bit better than I actually had hoped. So not bad, I think, for my first try at a scratch build. Well, it looks like we're done. The trestle is done. I have it installed on the curve on my HO layout. I've run the train across it several times to test it out. It works perfectly. So I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out so far. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned as much watching it as I did building it. And uh, you can look forward to my next video, which is going to be all about how I'm landscaping this area of the third line of my layout that I'm installing, which this trestle was a pivotal part of. So uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you again on the next video.